Humanity has faced two monumental questions since we first stood on two feet. Why are we here? And are we alone in the universe? Well, we may actually be closer to answering the latter. A study out of the UK is fueling theories that there are 36 intelligent alien races in just our galaxy alone. Joining me now to break it all down, theoretical physicist and author of The Future of Humanity, Michio Kaku. Uh, thank you so much, first of all, for joining us. When I read about this late last week, you're the first person I thought of. <laughs> so. Maybe we're getting closer to answering that question. Is there life outside of this, uh, outside of, uh, the, of Earth? Well, that's the greatest existential question of all time. Are we alone in the universe? Let's do a science experiment. Go outside tonight, look up, see the Milky Way galaxy. You are now staring at 100 billion stars in our backyard, the Milky Way galaxy, and then make a ballpark estimate. How many of those stars have planets? How many of those planets have oceans? How many of those oceans have fish and aquatic life? How many of them have intelligent life? And so this is called Drake's equation, trying to get a ballpark estimate of how many civilizations there are in the galaxy. And that's where they came up with the number 36. They took a bare bones, stripped down Drake's equation to get that number. It's a fascinating number, and it's encouraging. Uh, you know, I guess the question, though, is will, when or w will they reveal themselves? Why haven't they revealed themselves? And, and what can we expect? Are they going to be more intelligent than we are? Well, that's called the Fermi paradox. Where are they? It turns out that if you have a Milky Way galaxy with 36 dots on it, each dot is separated by 17,000 light years. So in other words, even if we are populated with 36 extraterrestrial life forms, the distance is so great that we're not going to be able to communicate with them with radio or television. It would take 17,000 years for a TV signal to go from one planet to the next planet. It's not going to happen anytime soon. Sorry about that. Okay, uh, but th there's no sense that they could have been so evolved uh, and long before us, they could be here. Maybe maybe they think we're still, uh, you know, uh, a few thousand years behind and, and maybe we'll get a welcome to see, hey, you know, we've advanced somewhat as a civilization. But uh, you, you don't want to dash our hopes that we might one day come in contact with E.T. Well, I think that one day they may actually land on the White House lawn and announce their existence. <laughs> However, as Stephen Hawking cautioned us, we have to be careful because remember when Cortez met Montezuma in Mexico? Cortez had steel, yeah. he had gunpowder, he had the horse, he had the written language, and the Aztecs had none of those. And within just a matter of a few months, the Aztec civilization collapsed. So let's hope that they are peaceful. I think they are. But let's hope they are peaceful when they land on the White House lawn. Michio, outside of the uh, potential hostile aliens, the future of humanity, what does it look like now? Well, you know, in 2024, we're going back to the moon. That's right. The first men and women will go back to the moon in 2024. And then it's on to Mars sometime after 2030. And who knows, maybe mining the asteroid belt to help pay for all of this, because we could have a new gold rush, a new gold rush in outer space by harvesting the platinum-based rare earth minerals inside the asteroid belt. And that could help to pay for the entire space program. So we're seeing a new frontier. Wow. Costs are dropping. Booster rockets are reusable. There's a partnership between public enterprise and private enterprise. So I think we're witnessing the dawn of a new era in space exploration. Well, it's wonderful to be alive at this time to see all of that. And it's great to have you guide us through it. Michio, thank you very much as usual. We appreciate it. My pleasure.